It came without warning, and it spreads like wildfire. But until today, its origins remain a mystery. The 2019 novel coronavirus is very unusual because it seems to spread much easier between both of us, between individuals. Since it was first discovered in Wuhan, the capital city of China's Hubei province late last year, the virus has killed more than 1,200 people and infected at least 45,000 others worldwide. For every single person who is affected, it seems as if there's going to be up to three or maybe four other persons who could also be affected. Wuhan and other surrounding cities have now been placed under a lockdown in a frantic effort to contain the spread of the virus. Some 60 million residents have also been effectively cut off from the outside world. What exactly is the 2019 novel coronavirus? Can the spread of this highly infectious disease be contained? A climate of fear has descended on Wuhan, the capital city of China's Hubei province, home to 11 million people. Many are asking, will they be the next victim? If so, when? They also can't bear the thought of losing their loved ones as a mysterious but lethal virus wreaks havoc in the city. The coronavirus has killed more than 1,200 people in just two months. The disease has also infected thousands of people at a staggering speed and scale that's triggering fears of a new global pandemic. 2019 novel coronavirus is very unusual. We are familiar with SARS and we honestly, we managed to control SARS in about six to nine months worldwide, which is actually quite amazing. And if you look at the numbers, we had 8,000, 10,000 people all in all. And, and this was over several months. But if you look at what's happening to 2019 novel coronavirus, we're seeing a whole lot of numbers coming up very rapidly over in just a month. It all began deep in the winter month of December 2019. A quiet, but deadly scenario was unraveling in Wuhan city, following a mysterious illness that had stricken a handful of people with symptoms of fever and cough. Wuhan has started off with an atypical, very unusual viral infection. And in, for the clinical talk, clinicians talk, it will be called what the atypical viral or atypical pneumonia be. You will have a typical person coming with fever, headache, a bit of cough, muscle aches, it sounds very much like a flu-like illness. But you know something is not quite right because a chest x-ray becomes abnormal. Number two, a lot of the test swaps for the influenzas will be negative or the other viruses are negative. Number three, you see groups of people coming in with the same illness. And all of them had the same pattern. Chinese health authorities identified the first patient who showed such symptoms on December 8th last year. The trickle rapidly sped up to infect scores of others. Two of the earliest patients reportedly worked at the Huanan Seafood Wholesale Market in Wuhan. The tipping point arrived hard and fast when the once innocent symptoms claimed the life of the first victim. 
On January 9, 2020, the mysterious virus killed a 61-year-old man who was known to be a regular customer at the market. And the initial investigations seems to show that a majority of the small number of cases that they had, uh, a lot of them seemed to pinpoint to that part of the market which was actually dealing with the wildlife trade. And so with these kinds of information, it appears to be somehow hopping over from the wildlife, maybe interspecies, we don't know because all these animals are kept together in cages and it's a nice milieu for them to hop over from one species to the other. And then from there, they can sort of, you know, uh, hop the species barrier and get onto humans. China alerted the World Health Organization of a mysterious virus outbreak in Wuhan on December 31st. By the time the WHO declared the outbreak as a global emergency on January 29th, the virus has spread to all of China's 31 provinces and more than 25 countries across Asia, Europe and North America. When you hear a story, when you see this story, it spells déjà vu. It really spells very much like the SARS which we had in 2003. And true enough, the cases became more and more and then suddenly there was an explosion of cases. The 2019 novel coronavirus outbreak is eerily similar to the 2002 SARS epidemic. Back then, SARS swept through the region, infecting some 8,000 people and killed 774. When it was first detected, Chinese health authorities denied it was the deadly SARS virus, the severe acute respiratory syndrome of 2002. Subsequent discoveries revealed the latest outbreak was caused by a coronavirus with 76% genetic similarity to the SARS coronavirus. The only difference is, compared to SARS, it is apparently less lethal but far more contagious. For every single person who is affected, it seems as if there's going to be up to three or maybe four other persons who could also be affected. Uh, so if you take 6,000, maybe there's probably at least another um, 20 or 30,000 people that are out there. And these are very conservative estimates because the numbers are likely to be much more exponential than that. The 2019 novel coronavirus is very unusual because it seems to spread much easier between both of us, between individuals. Simply coming close or talking, you may actually spread the infection not like SARS. Early studies suggest that the incubation period of the virus, that is, from the time of exposure to the time when signs and symptoms begin to show, is about five to seven days. It looks likely that patients or carriers of the virus can infect others when they are asymptomatic, meaning when they don't have signs of being ill there was this asymptomatic infection and mild infections and now we hear about the people who can be infectious even during the incubation period. The scenario seems different in the case of SARS which appears to have lower infection rates. Infectious diseases specialist Dr. Liang Ho Nam is very familiar with the deadly virus. He was, after all, a former SARS patient himself. He contracted the virus back in 2003 while tending to a female patient who flew into Singapore from Hong Kong. Infection of patients with SARS happened best in the second half of the illness, after the first seven days. In other words, if I had four sick, and I can confine myself in the first seven days, I can effectively prevent the spread of the virus to the next person. But 2019 novel coronavirus is different. You can actually find the virus in people who have no symptoms, and it's postulated by the Minister of Health in China himself that these asymptomatic individuals, these individuals with no symptoms, can spread person to person. And we don't even need to wait till the seven days. 
before symptoms onset. Disease may spread even before the onset of illness. This allows the virus to propagate very quickly across large swaths of area, many, many people. And hence, we are seeing these numbers of unprecedented spread of infections. Coronaviruses are common in many species of animals, such as camels, cattle, civet cats, and bats. On occasion, the virus strains mutate and spread from animals to humans. This jump was evident in the case of SARS in 2002, in the Middle East Respiratory Syndrome, or MERS, in 2012, and now in the 2019 novel coronavirus. As it turned out, the suspected ground zero of the outbreak, the now shuttered seafood market in Wuhan, was also dealing in legal and illegal trade and consumption of exotic wildlife. The cages do not get changed and the poop is allowed to circulate. So you are breeding the ultimate virus that one day will adapt well to the animals that are there, that one day will adapt to the humans that keeps coming in contact. One day the right mutation will happen where the receptor fits nicely well into the humans and in turn allow person-to-person -person transfer. But exactly which animal and what was the reservoir and so on and so forth, of course that will take some time for us to get to know. It took a while for us to figure that out for SARS as well. It took some 10 months if I'm not mistaken. So this is going to go on for a bit. The situation is evolving so quickly. The virus is getting stronger. The infection is, infection, number of infections are likely to rise. So I think we just have to be psychologically prepared that this can get worse than SARS. How are ordinary people reacting? How are the healthcare workers on the front line coping? It's the middle of January 2020. The number of reported cases of those infected by the novel coronavirus in China has begun to soar. Hospitals have been struggling to cope with people suspected of contracting the deadly virus. Resources were also stretched to the limit as the number of patients with fever and breathing difficulties kept growing every single day. By this time, cases of the novel coronavirus had found its way to major Chinese cities far away from the epicenter. Beijing in the north and Shenzhen in the south. Zhou Tui Cheung is a senior nurse at a pediatric ward in Shenzhen. When she was first alerted about the major outbreak, she quickly signed up to be a volunteer with the Infectious Diseases Department. Even though she's not trained in dealing with infectious diseases, she took it in her stride. She felt compelled to help her colleagues who have been overwhelmed by the sheer number of people seeking medical help. 因为这个时候，感染科发热门诊本来的护士是很少的，他们只有三个人，那肯定是需要全院、全院护理人员来支援他们。When she learned about the virus outbreak, it was just days before the Chinese New Year holidays. Many of the hospital staff were already on leave. 
that contributed to the shortage of healthcare workers, and it was a matter of time before chaos started to surface in the already rapidly deteriorating situation. 大年初一那天，其实相对来说还是比较乱的，因为刚开始出来，大家比较恐慌，然后来的人非常多。当天来的人，我是值白班，八点到十六点，当时来了，呃，有一百多个人。当然看看诊的没那么多，看诊放过去给医生看诊的估计有呃八十左右。但是来了一百多人，你为什么有些人没看呢？是因为有些人是没有任何症状，没有流行病病学史，然后他们也过来看了。因为很多市民是因为恐慌，然后担心在地铁上啊、公交车上接触了类似的患者，然后跑过来要求筛查这样子的情况。The resources in the hospital are overwhelmed. There have been many videos that have been shared on social media. About what's happening in China and the hospitals, and as as a healthcare worker, I pray for the healthcare workers in China, because they are going through a difficult time, and on their faces are fatigue, exhaustion. I just cannot take the next day forward. There were emotionally trying moments for Joe. Including one occasion when she had to separate a child who's been infected with the virus from her parents, but she had to be firm for the sake of their own safety. Actually, is there. Just like, uh, before living in our ward, there was a kind of a 51-bed hospital. His parents and mother are from Wuhan. His parents and mother are not symptomatic, but when they come back, the child is sick. The child is sick. The child is sick. The child is sick. 然后我们是因为因为现在形势是在比较严峻，然后我们是劝他爸爸妈妈是不要待在病房的，然后呢就只能由奶奶过来照顾，然后爸爸妈妈非常的焦虑，然后，但是，真的是我们真的就，就就很很不忍心叫他回去，但是又不得不这么做，就是为了保护大家所有人的安全。January 20th was a critical turning point in the way authorities dealt with the virus outbreak. For weeks after the virus first surfaced, authorities had insisted that the mystery virus was restricted to the animal vector. On that day, however, China's renowned and respected epidemiologist, Dr. Zhong Nanshan, dropped the bombshell. In a TV interview, he confirmed cases of human-to-human -human transmission of the deadly coronavirus. That dramatically altered the way China dealt with the outbreak. In a bold and unprecedented move, China put the city of Wuhan, with a population of 11 million people, under quarantine. All roads to the city were sealed off, and public transportation was shut down. The lockdown was expanded to the larger Hubei province with some 60 million people. The Chinese government has at least tried to restrict inflow and outflow into the her province itself. Travel outside, outside China itself has been constrained, which has helped to at least contain the flow of people. They have extended the holiday period for the Chinese New Year as well. Uh, in a situation like this where you have an epidemic, mass hysteria can actually cause more problem than anything else. So sharing information earlier would have been a bit better. I think it's actually a very good strategy. And I think that they could only do this in China. Still, there are many Wuhan natives who are worried about the fate of their loved ones still trapped in the city. 22-year-old Liu Wuyuan is one of them. She has been working in Beijing for the last one year and was looking forward to return to Wuhan to celebrate the new year with her family. But the long-awaited homecoming failed to materialize after news broke, confirming evidence of human-to-human -human transmissions. When her mother called her and told her not to return to Wuhan, she was heartbroken. Going home for the new year was something she was eagerly looking forward to after being away from her family for a year. 
，呃，是在钟南山院士那个采访，就是说会有人传人这个情况以后，我妈晚上赶紧给我打了一个电话，我记得特别深刻，是大概两点多钟，她跟我说，要不你真的别回来了吧，我思前想后，我觉得你就还是在北京待着吧。因为我是二十九号回去，然后初五就回来，他觉得太折腾，而且存在一个人传人的风险。我当时还有点感冒，所以就觉得要不就待在北京会更安全一点。嗯，我一开始是不愿意就是待在北京的，还是想回家。对，但是因为家里一直坚持说就留北京比较安全，就没有回去了。She spent the New Year alone in Beijing. But that has not put her mind at ease, as she kept thinking of her parents' safety and welfare. 呃，基本上是保持呃一天两个视频，就是中午和晚上大概饭点的这个时间，然后跟他们视频，看一下吃的怎么样啊，然后现在情况怎么样，然后跟他们再三的 check 有没有出门，就一定一定不能出门。有，我是呃四点多钟的时候起来，就是噩梦惊醒，因为那段时间其实整个人状态都不是特别好，一直都有担心。然后四点多钟起来的时候，看到封城的那个消息，我马上给我妈发，然后打电话。我记得我那个电话一开头就是哭，就一直哭，因为已经很担心，很担心，一定是疫情已已经到一个非常严重的情况，才会出现说封城这么一个策略。嗯，然后当时也问过妈妈说，呃，那我们接下来是怎么办？物资够不够啊？然后我看见网上有人说什么赶紧逃离啊什么呀，我妈就说哪儿都不去，就在家待着。嗯 ，It tells me that. The amount of spread there is before the lockdown was unprecedented, very rapid. Number two, many people were falling very sick, and they were going to get out of Wuhan for the Chinese New Year festivity. Festivity, and from there, the spread will be even unprecedented. So, what the Chinese government did was correct, and it's the right thing to do. It seems very hard. Heartless. It seems unimaginable, but it's the right thing to do. When SARS broke out in 2002, the world was caught unaware by just how lethal the virus was and how fast it could spread. Today, the rapid spread of the 2019 novel coronavirus is just as alarming. Just days. After the World Health Organization was alerted to the possible outbreak of a mysterious virus in Wuhan on December 31, 2019, countries responded by ramping up their internal defences against the possible spread of the virus. Singapore, for example, implemented thermal screenings at the airports for all travellers coming from Wuhan. It has since banned all Chinese visitors and foreigners with the recent history of travel to China. Today, on almost every continent, countries have taken similar steps of closing their borders to flights and foreign visitors from China as the number of infections outside China grows. There are more than 45,000 confirmed cases of the novel coronavirus in more than 25 other countries and territories. There are many problems, but one of the chief ones will be the global travel, because you know even if you say let's not get people coming in from China, but then there are many people who are already affected outside of China, and these people are still traveling everywhere, and so we are still vulnerable. That. Is actually going to lead to a lot of asymptomatic people around the globe who cannot display symptoms, and then they have the possibility to, to transmit. Now, how infectious and how transmissible they are, we don't know. Painful memories of SARS have left a mark on the two Asian cities, Hong Kong and Singapore. They both suffered the biggest brunt of the respiratory illness outside mainland China. There were 299 deaths in Hong Kong and 33 in Singapore, but that painful experience has helped the region deal with the new deadly virus more effectively. The Hong Kongers were fabulous. The Hong Kongers administrators knew what to do. They were not hesitant in shutting down schools, declaring emergencies, and locking down the individuals. And in Singapore. Where I am very, very intimately aware, we have been having 
annual drills of SARS-like viruses. We have been preparing this for the last 16 years. And enough said, we are now ready for the 2019 novel coronaviruses. You can see books and stacks of protocols that are written, what to do if this happens, what to do if you are not, where to identify areas for quarantine, where should people rest, where do we get extra staff from? What happens if the school were to close? What happens if nobody could work? Where do you get this extra manpower? All these questions are answered way before this outbreak. Dr. Yu Zhejian is the chief physician of the Infectious Diseases Department in Union Hospital in Shenzhen. When he first heard of the mysterious virus, he was taken by surprise. He then set up an emergency response team in the hospital and recruited volunteer colleagues from other departments. 因为我们应对这场疫情，那么光靠我们传染科、感染科，还有发热门诊，单纯的力量是不够的。Another innovative strategy by Dr. Yu was to set up a telemedicine unit. The idea was to provide critical information to the people who were unsure if they were really ill, as well as to ease the burden of hospital staff due to the escalating number of admissions. 按照现在的这个要求开展的互联网医院的网上咨询平台，那么通过这个网上咨询能够更加便捷的服务我们的患者，使他那么昨天一天的我们网上咨询量就有一千六百多条，那么这个网上嗯互联网咨询平台的开建
Then at the bottom of the pyramid, you have people who are, you know, less symptomatic and then you have the asymptomatic big huge chunk at the bottom of the pyramid. So in order to understand how you're going to contain, you need to know the big pyramid. But here, if you focus only on the iceberg at the top, you are going to get hit by what's below. Medicine has taught us with limited resources, you only treat those who are the sickest. So the sickest will get admitted and this will be the top of the pyramid. And what we are seeing perhaps are just the top 10-20% of the patients. And for the rest of it, 80% we are not seeing, we are not treating, we are not quarantining. Instead, we are releasing them back into the public where they can in turn reinfect others. What we are not seeing will be the greater base at the pyramid, which are easily 40 times more than what we are seeing now. These are the ones where there are active propagation of the virus. Since the World Health Organization declared the novel coronavirus outbreak as a global emergency, international response has been swift. All flights to and from Wuhan and the larger Hubei province have been banned. And citizens have also been advised against all non-essential travels to China. Scores of nations, including Indonesia, Philippines, Japan, South Korea, New Zealand, France, Turkey and the US have scrambled to evacuate their citizens from Wuhan city as China struggles to come to grips with the outbreak. Should China be blamed for the latest epidemic? During the 2003 SARS outbreak, the government took some four months before announcing to the world about the severity of the crisis. It was then accused of withholding information and covering up. In the current epidemic, it took the government about one month to declare after the first case was reported on December 8, 2019. By January 12th, Chinese scientists had already identified the virus as the new coronavirus similar to SARS. It has since shown speed and political resolve to control and contain the outbreak. The Chinese government has at least tried to restrict inflow and outflow into the, her province itself. Travel outside, outside China itself has been constrained, which has helped to at least contain the flow of people. They have extended the holiday period for the Chinese New Year as well. So these are measures that are slightly on the brighter side. So there are some positive signs where the Chinese government has done some positive things. I think we have to go back to the root of the problem, whatever emerging or re-emerging infection it is and to understand the dynamics and the nature in which it actually crossed over to the human species. Where exactly did we go wrong? Why are we allowing this, this issue of wildlife and humans to come close to each other? We should abandon that. And as the novel coronavirus spreads, there's also growing fear that the deadly pathogens or viruses can mutate and spread to become a more effective killing machine. It's been more than two months since the first case of the new novel coronavirus was discovered on December 8, 2019. Streets in the typically bustling Chinese cities are eerily quiet and deserted. Such an unusual scene is now a common sight in the country as fears grow over the spread of the deadly coronavirus, turning the once vibrant metropolis into virtual ghost towns. Liu's response is typical for many Chinese. The fear of catching the virus has forced many people to avoid crowded places or engage in outdoor activities. Honestly, 
你跟我打电话的时候，嗯，不要说武汉话，可能你周围的人经过的时候会觉得有一些异样，或者是怎么样。She is, however, more worried about the situation involving her parents and her friends. Despite all the assurances, they know that there's only so much they can do to protect themselves against the marauding virus, not knowing if and when it will hit them. I think they are there, but they are not going to go too far away from me as a parent. 我接受到的更多的焦虑也好，或者说真实的那种紧张的情绪，更多的是来自于我同龄的朋友。嗯，他们可能比如说有的也是刚刚工作，然后提前就回家了，现在也在武汉；还有的就是一直就在武汉，还在读研，或者说就在武汉工作。那我们之间的沟通可能会来得更加真实一些，会直接跟我说现在的情绪是怎么样的呀？很紧张啊，很焦虑啊，然后可能打不到车呀，种种种种。但是你问父母，父母永远都是没事儿，很安全，不要担心。The reality is, fear and anxiety continue to grip the residents of Wuhan. Despite the best efforts by the authorities to try and keep the virus at bay, the death toll shows no signs of slowing down. Meanwhile, the scientific community is now racing against time. To try and find a vaccine that could help fight and prevent further spread of the disease, is there a chance that an effective vaccine will be found anytime soon? The good thing about the current novel coronavirus is that we can make use of existing knowledge of the SARS coronavirus vaccine and apply the same principles to. The 2019 novel coronavirus. What they would have to do now is to actually design it. Designing is relatively easy. Grow it, and show that while growing, the vaccine does exactly what it's supposed to do. And the prototypes would then need to be manufactured in large quantities, so that it can be given to a large group of people. But the bad news is, according to experts. A vaccine for the novel coronavirus will take months to develop and manufacture. It will have to go through several clinical trials before the vaccine is ready for use in time to respond to the epidemic. It will take easily nine to twelve months, even if the even if the vaccines are available now at this very moment, it will take several months for the quantities to be made. We're talking about several hundred million doses for the people in China, for the people in Asia, and for the rest of the world. This will take time. In the meantime, short of an effective and easily available vaccine, immediate preventive measures have to be aggressively enforced. China has since banned the popular wildlife trade until the health crisis is over. There are also increasing calls from the international scientific community for the ban to be made permanent. I think that is to some extent what happened after SARS, because look at the the the, the wildlife trading. You know, if more things were done back seven, fifteen plus or seventeen years ago, maybe、uh, anyway, don't we can't turn the clock back. Men. And these animals, we are not meant to be living side by side. Viruses like this exist in wildlife. You put the situation of man and wildlife together in this kind of situations for a protracted period of time. These things can happen, and I think you know we are just tempting fate. We tend to eat anything that flies, swims, or crawls, and when we bring these animals into Our dinner table, we bring the viruses over along as well. Perhaps you, as the diner, will not need to see it because it'll be destroyed by the cooking. But the chef in preparation, the animal handler, the market that has to look after all these animals, will invariably be exposed to the virus. And we saw that in SARS 2003. In 2003. They realized that the animal handlers encountered a form of SARS, a variant of SARS, 
before the original one came along, such that they developed immunity to SARS. And one way to counter this is what the Chinese government has done. It stopped exotic animals from being onto the dining table. Perhaps we need to relook at what we eat. But as the battle rages on to bring the virus under control, there are still many unknowns and questions that need to be answered. For example, how lethal is this virus? Where did it originally come from? How infectious is it? Will the coronavirus that's now spreading with frightening speed in China become a global pandemic? The reality is, the virus has so far killed more than 1,200 people. The death toll has even surpassed SARS, both in the number of fatalities and confirmed cases within a much shorter period. Still, there's hope that the worst will soon be over. It's just a question of how and when that will happen. For those currently at the front line of the battle against the novel coronavirus, the risk is still far greater than previously imagined given the scale of the infections. Still, nurses like Joe is confident that China will turn a corner and that the battle will be won, sooner or later. I think I'm very confident because everyone can see that now 那个宣传做得非常好。目前公共场所，呃，包括地铁、公交、超市，包括小区，都呃，每个人都戴上了口罩。其实就这就很很大的阻阻挡了病毒的那种传播。嗯、呃，我觉得这点非常非常有效，而且很多人自觉的就在家里隔离，很多那些公园啊、景点啊都已经关闭了。从这点出发。反正我觉感觉，呃，非常有信心。作为一个武汉人来说啊，我觉得我们这一次其实是做出了，嗯、呃，挺好的一个举措，也是一个壮士断腕的一个决心，做出封城这样的举措。嗯，而且包括各个城市，比如说像河南，我了解到他们在疫情的防控上面做的是非常及时，而且呃，非常行之有效的。所以我觉得这次在。In the long term, when the dust settles, it's going to take a lot of soul searching. It appears that so long as humans interact in close proximity with animals, future outbreaks of infectious diseases are likely to occur. Since the virus started wreaking havoc in China last December. No one knows when the surge will peak and start to decline. One can only hope that it will be soon. If there is a best case scenario, it could potentially lead to a drop in numbers. But I haven't seen that. We can only begin to discuss that once we see the numbers actually falling. As of now, we are still seeing the cases coming up and the, the mortality, of course, you know, the, as more cases come in. So until and unless we see that numbers mitigating, we can't predict what's going to happen in the region. Yeah, so this is going to go on for a while. We'll walk through and ride through. We will no doubt lose some of our comrades, our relatives, our close ones. But the world will come out stronger. The world will come out better. Okay? We will remember those who are lost, but we will, with this remembrance, remembrance, we will prevent new ones from happening.